Muslim scholars admit that the Quran is filled with myths, fables, and legends is that this is exactly what the people around Muhammad said when he started delivering these revelations. Muhammad's contemporaries recognized these stories in the Quran as myths, fables, and legends, even according to the Quran. Surah 6, verse 25. When they come to thee to dispute with thee, the infidels say, Verily, this is nothing but fables of the ancients. Surah 8, verse 31. And when our signs were being recited to them, they said, We have already heard. If we wished, we could say the like of this. This is naught but the fairy tales of the ancients. Surah 25, verses 4 to 5. Those who disbelieve say, This is naught but a lie that he hath invented, and other folk have helped him with it, so that they have produced a slander and a lie. And they say, Fables of the men of old, which he hath had written down, so that they are dictated to him morn and evening. Surah 68, verse 15. When our signs are recited to him, he says, Fairy tales of the ancients. Surah 83, verse 13. Who, when thou readest unto him our revelations, saith, Mere fables of the men of old. So, when Muhammad delivered his revelations about the sleepers of the cave or about Dhul Karnain, the people around him kept saying, We've heard these stories before. We know where these stories come from. These are fables. They're fairy tales. They're bedtime stories. And Muslim scholars are finally starting to agree. Sometimes, your first impression is the correct one. Okay, what's up guys? Uh, sorry for the delay in making videos. Uh, I've been busy playing... You guessed it. <laughs> Spider-Man 2. So I've been busy playing Spider-Man 2 on PS5. That's why I've been... Uh, uh, unable to make videos, but now here I am making another video refuting everybody's favorite psychopath. Faster than you could say mental hospitals, disabled kids in hammers, David Wood keeps, or disabled dead kids in hammers, David Wood keeps repeating same old arguments against the, uh, against the Quran. So, again, David Wood, in this particular case, David Wood is committing something called uh, David Wood and the disbelievers are committing something called the genetic fallacy. So what is the genetic fallacy? The genetic fallacy is uh, the uh, genetic, or wait, David Wood and the disbelievers that are quoted in the Quran uh, commits the genetic fallacy in the post ergo proper hot fallacy. Uh, you know, what is the genetic fallacy? The genetic fallacy is attacking the source of the claim instead of the claim itself. So an example of the genetic fallacy would be uh, my second grade teacher said 2 plus 2 equals 4. My second grade teacher is evil. I don't like her. Therefore, 2 plus 2 is not does not equal 4 because it comes from a bad source or it comes from a problematic source. This is called the genetic, genetic fallacy. It's a fallacious argument. And the disbelievers uh, quoted, quoted in the Quran in David Wood, commit the post ergo propter hoc fallacy, which is the fallacy that says the thing before caused the uh, thing after, or the event before caused the event after. So these are fallacious arguments. So, but, well, notice what David, notice what the Quran is doing. It's quoting what the disbelievers are saying, because the disbelievers or the enemies of Muhammad were making excuses, not to, making any kind of excuse not to believe in the revelation of the Quran. Uh, just like the enemies of Jesus were saying in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, that Jesus was demon-possessed, uh, he was doing miracles by the help of Satan, etc. So the disbelievers, according to the New Testament and the Quran, will make up any kind of excuse, excuses not to believe in Jesus and Muhammad, according to the New Testament and the Quran. Uh, you know, what the, what the New Testament and the Quran quotes from. But anyways, the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, the stories revealed in the Quran were revealed by Allah or God, according to the Quran chapter 25 verse 6. The Quran chapter 25 verse 6 says that it's Allah, Allah revealing these stories, or it's God revealing these, sor these, these sources or these stories 
mentioned in the Quran. So the Quran chapter 25 verse 6. Now notice what, notice what David Wood did. He only quoted the Quran chapter 25 uh, verse 5. But if you read the Quran chapter 25 verse 6, the Quran responds to these uh, critics or these disbelievers. They say, the Quran says it's Allah, it's Allah or God revealing these stories. Uh, again, see the Quran chapter 25 verse 6. Uh, moreover, David Wood is being inconsistent because, like I said in previous, um, like I said in previous uh, videos, that the Bible quotes from these apocryphal sources. Uh, you know, like the Bible does quote from sources not found in the uh, Old Testament or the New Testament. I'll give you an example. The Bible or the Old Testament quotes from non-biblical sources as truthful. For example, the Old Testament refers to the book, The Wars of the Lord, in Numbers chapter 21, verse 14. That's not found in the Old Testament canon that we have today, or in today's current uh, Old Testament. Uh, the Old Testament quotes from the book of Jasher in Joshua chapter 10, verse 13, in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18. Again, that's not found in the Old Testament we have today. Uh, uh, Acts of Solomon is mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 41. Again, that's not in the Old Testament we have today. Uh, the annals of King David in 1 Chronicles chapter 27, verse 24 is mentioned in the Old Testament, or it's quoted in the Old Testament, but we don't have that book. We don't have that book in today's Old Testament canon. Uh, the Jews obviously had canonical books, which were inspired, and they had historical books, which were uninspired. However, these books still contain some truth. Uh, pagan, even the Old Testament or the Bible quotes from pagan prophets in Numbers chapter 24, in Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. Uh, so pagan prophets sometimes spoke the truth. At one point, God even speaks truth through a donkey in Numbers chapter 22, verse 28. So truth is truth no matter where it's found. So notice the hypocrisy or notice the inconsistency of David Wood. When the Bible quotes from these apocryphal sources, or when the Old Testament quotes from these apocryphal or these uh, uh, non-canonical sources, it's okay because the Bible is quoting from the Bible is quoting from non-biblical sources uh, is is quoting uh, true statements found in non-biblical sources according to Christian scholars. Their excuse is that. The Bible is quoting from, or the Old Testament is quoting from non-biblical sources, but these non-biblical sources have some true, have some true, or some true stories in them. In the Bible or the Old Testament is confirming that there are true statements and stories found in them. So notice how David would grant that for the Bible, but he doesn't grant that for the Quran. He says, well, the Quran is just plagiarizing these fables uh, or these fictional stories, but he doesn't realize that the. <laughs> That the Old Testament does the same thing too. It quotes from the apocryphal sources. Thus, uh, the defense Christian apologists have for this is that the Old Testament quotes non-biblical sources as truthful, as having some truth in them. Uh, and not only that, but the New Testament itself quotes from non-biblical sources as having truth in them. Uh, the, the famous example of this would be... Uh, would be the book of Jude in 2 Peter copy or plagiarize, a copy and plagiarize off something called 1 Enoch. 1 Enoch is not in the Old Testament canon that we have uh, today. Uh, so, you know, the, the, defense, the defense Christian apologists have is that Jude and 2 Peter do not assert that these books are inspired scripture, simply uninspired truth. So, you know, uh, the so the defense the, the defense Christian apologists give is that Jude in two Peter does not say the entire book is true, but part of the book is true. So why can't the same defense uh, be claimed for the Quran? The Quran does not say the entire apocryphal Old Testament or New Testament apocryphal sources are truthful, just that part of the books are true. Right? So that's what the Quran is doing. It's quoting from the true statements found in these Old Testament and New Testament apocryphal sources uh, because there is truth in them. Because the Bible, both the Old Testament and New Testament, quote 
from these Old Testament apocryphal sources. Uh, so does that mean the Bible is copying fables or fictions? No, because the defense Christian apologists uh, give for this, like I said, is that there are uh, that these books do have uninspired truth in them. Uh, you know, in, in the New Testament quotes from other sources, uh, for example, um, other sources that you can't find in the Bible or the Old Testament, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 8 uh, quotes from an unknown uh, Old Testament apocryphal book. Uh, you know, and uh, of course, uh, Paul quotes in 2 Corinthians uh, from the life of Adam and Eve about the third heaven. But you can't find that in the canonical Old Testament or the Old Testament we have today. It comes from the life of Adam and Eve, which is a Old Testament apocryphal or pseudographical book. So notice the inconsistency or notice the hypocrisy of David Wood here. Uh, when, the, when the Bible quotes from these apocryphal sources, it's fine. But when the Quran does it, it's a, it's a problem. So, you know, like, you just got to do a little bit of research or know a little bit of common sense or know how logic and reasoning works in order to refute this claim. Because I always hear this claim, the Quran copied off apocryphal sources, the Quran copied off, uh, the Quran copied off these uh, fables or these Old Testament, New Testament, or these biblical apocryphal sources. But this is a fallacy. This is a fallacious argument. And it backfires against the Bible because the Bible, both the Old Testament and New Testament, does the same thing. It quotes from apocryphal sources. So David Wood either has to become an atheist in order to be consistent and just reject the Bible and the Quran, or he has to um, he has to acknowledge that the Bible does the same thing. Thus, if the if the Quran goes down, the Bible goes down too. But he's not going to admit that. So the whole thing is that, yes, the Quran does quote from these or have statements that are also found in these Old Testament and New Testament apocryphal sources. That's true. I'm not denying that, but I'm saying it's not a problem because uh, the Bible does the same thing, too. And according to Christian scholars, there are true statements found in these apocryphal sources uh, or these, you know, these apocryphal sources. And the Quran is confirming or repeating true stories and statements found in those sources uh, you know as uninspired truth so you know if the Bible can quote from these sources why can't the Quran do the same thing too so hopefully this clarifies up this clarifies this point or this clarifies this uh, argument up it shows the hypocrisy and the inconsistency of David Wood in that in the fact that David Wood can't do logic and reasoning because this whole argument is a fallacy uh, stay tuned, more videos coming up ahead.